Happy Sabbath, everyone. We want to say happy, happy Sabbath and welcome. Welcome, welcome to No Time to Gossip. Happy, happy Sabbath. Blessed Sabbath. So we're going to have song service and then we're going to lead right into Sabbath school. So, but before we begin, let us have a word of prayer, shall we? Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we thank you, we praise you for who you are. Blood out our transgression, dear Lord, they're ever before us. Now, Lord, tune our hearts to sing with you, dear, so that you will sing with us, dear Father. Bless us, and we ask for the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, Brother O'Shane and I will be doing song service here. All right, praise God. Happy, happy Sabbath, everyone. All right, we pray you all can hear us. All right, our first song, we're going to sing from our Songs of Praise songbook. Our first song will be more about Jesus. That's more about Jesus. More about Jesus. Amen. More about Jesus I would know. More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus. Won't you tell me more, more about Jesus? More of his saving fullness. See, more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus. Let me learn more of his holy will. Discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. Won't you tell me more, more about Jesus? More of his saving fullness, see. More of his love who died for me. More about Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. More, more about Jesus. Won't you tell me more, more about Jesus? More of his saving fullness, see. More of his love who died for me. More about Jesus on his throne. Riches in glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase. More of his coming prince of peace. More, more about Jesus. Won't you tell me more? More about Jesus. More of his saving fullness, see. More of his love who died for me. All right, praise God. More about Jesus. Yes, we want to know more about him every day. Amen. He's so sweet. Our next song is going to be Redeemed. That's number 48 from our thing here. Redeemed is the fast one. Is no, this is the slow one, sorry. <laughs> Redeem. Redeem how I... Okay. It's the slow one. Okay. Redeem how I love to proclaim it. Redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeem, redeem. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. His child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of Him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem how I love to proclaim it, His child and forever I am. I know I shall see in His beauty the King in 
whose law I delight, who lovingly guarded my footsteps and gave at me song in the night. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem how I love to proclaim it, His child and forever I am. And you know what we want God to give us? We want you to give us the showers of blessing. Amen. We're seeking God's blessing today. That will be our number 28. Showers of blessing. Amen. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Precious reviving again over the hills and the valleys. Sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing. Now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. Amen. Our next song is coming from the best hymnal, which is the Bible. And it's... For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, I shine in a heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earth and vessel that the excellency of the power six and seven. We are troubled and are not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 6-9 We want to have the mind of Christ, amen? Which mind do we need? The mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord 
to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, verses 5 to 8 and 11. Amen. And our next song is going to be taken from Psalms 19. The Psalms 19, 7 to 11 and verse 14. The Psalms 19, 7 to 11 and verse 14. And verse 10 is the chorus. Amen. May God be praised. This is a reminder of today. Amen. The law of the Lord is perfect, perfect, is perfect. converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More to be desired on day than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, honey. And the honeycomb, the statues of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, is pure, and light in the eyes. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, honey, and the honeycomb. The fear of the Lord is clean, is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, are true, and righteous altogether. More to be desired all day than gold. Yea, then much fine gold, oh, oh, oh. sweeter also than honey, honey, and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant one, and in keeping of them there is great reward. More to be desired all day than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, honey, and the honeycomb. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. More to be desired all day than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, honey, and the honeycomb. More to be desired all day than gold. Yea, them much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, honey, and the honeycomb. Our last one is to remind us that we must be kind one to another and also forgiving one another. Amen. And being kind, kind, kind one, one, to, one, one to another, another tender hearted, forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And being kind, kind, one, one, to, one, one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ephesians 4, verse 32. Amen. Praise the Lord. We praise God. We praise God because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. So praise God from whom all blessing flow. Again, our memory verse is taken from Daniel chapter 2, verse 31 to 35. Good, uh, good to see you, Sister Brenda and Sister Nelson. Praise God. Welcome to each and every one of you who are here on Zoom. Brother Dwight, praise God. We welcome you here on Zoom. Now, so we praise God for who he is because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Glory be to his name. God is good. Amen. We know we are not here by half stand. We're here because Jesus wake us up this morning. Praise God. What a blessing it is to be in the land of the living. Now, before I read the memory verse, I, um, good to see you, my sister. Blessing, blessing. I love you. God bless you. 
All right. So before we begin, I'm going to read the memory verse, but we got to pray because it's God's word. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We ask now for the Holy Spirit to give us the understanding and we pray that you will be with us. Oh God, in Jesus name. Amen. Daniel chapter two from verse 31 to 35. Amen. And it states, thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image. This image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee and the form thereof was terrible. The image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, all right? His belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet of part clay and part of, I'm sorry, his feet of part iron and part of clay. Thou sawest still that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver and the gold broken to pieces together and become like the chaff of a summer threshing floor floors and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them and the and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth it did what it filled the whole earth amen praise god it filled the whole earth bless you to my sister nelson it filled the whole earth all right so we know that God shows, because you see, Nebuchadnezzar was wondering what is to come in the future. That was his thing. You know, many of us like, oh, we wonder about what will the future hold, you know? So Nebuchadnezzar was wondering what, because before him, there was no king, right? You didn't see him talk about kings, you know? So he was wondering what is to become and what did God says? God show him what was to come, right? And so he went to bed. You remember, he was a heathen king. He went to bed. He got the dream, but you know what? He couldn't remember and he don't understand the interpretation of the dream. So he needed his soothsayers, his, his magician and all of those. And saints, let me tell you, children of God, do not go to the tarot card reader. Don't go to the obia man, the science man, whatever you might call him, the voodoo man, whatever you may call him, the tarot card reader. They are not of God. Remember God's uh, necromancy. Remember when Saul went to the witch, witch of Endor? And he knew because he got rid of all of them before. But now God was not speaking to him, neither through dreams, Visions, no, no prophet. God, did, God, his probation was closed. God was not speaking to him anymore. So here we see now Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And so praise God, God gave the, 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 the same dream to Daniel because Daniel is following the will of God. So he got the same dream and God not only gave him the dream, God gave him the interpretation of the dream. So here we see it is showing us from the time of Nebuchadnezzar reign to the to down to our time. Which time are we now? We're in the feet, okay? We're out there by the toes, iron and clay. They cannot mix together, all right? But if you notice, when this, when this whole thing started, it started with the head of what? Gold. And as it continues, you realize that it depreciated. You go to silver, you go to brass, you go to iron, then you go to iron and clay. Do you realize it? And when now, where does the, the stone is going to hit, right? It is going to hit. It says, until they saw what? A, a what? Um, it was broken to pieces. A stone that was cut out without hand. That reminds me of the wall, the, the, the writing on the wall. Mini, mini, tikel you far sin, you know, with Belshazzar. Uh, um, so we see here, it hit the feet. Why? Do you realize that the feet is, is, is now become the weakest part, right? And so it hit on the feet. And then everything crumbles. It then it first it says head, it says gold, silver, brass, iron, iron and clay. Then now it starts from the bottom. It goes from um the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold. You realize it goes the opposite way. And if you do, if you recognize, it's the same thing with money. When money starts off, you have gold and you have silver, and now you have they have the metal money, and now look what we have paper, and you realize that now they're trying to go digital. So you see, everything is depreciating. We are not living longer, we are living shorter lives. Before man lived up to 900 and the um Methuselah was 969 and so forth. You see man lived 300 and something, 500 and 600 until three something. And then man come down to 120. And now man's lifespan come to what? Three scores and 10 by reason of strength. Three score is 60 because a score in the Bible is 20. So when it says three score and 10, now you live to be 70. So anybody who lived 70 and above, you know, praise God. Praise God. Okay, we're not living longer, we're living shorter lives, and so while we're alive, let's praise God because all of these things God show us. You know, that's a beautiful thing about God, He does not leave us in the dark, He let us know what is to come. Amen. He shows us the thing that is to come, 
and what will be all right so we must understand so as our brother orion now is going to come because this is where we're dealing with we're dealing with these four kingdoms you know we're in the last one you know from pagan from rome pagan rome it transitioned over to papal rome right and before you have physical babylon and God called them out of Babylon. And if you look in the Old Testament, it says Babylon is falling, right? Now, you look in the New Testament, you see in Revelation 18, it says Babylon is falling. Is falling. So we see that now we're not in physical Babylon. Now we're in spiritual Babylon. And you know, the spiritual one is even wicked, more wicked than the physical because it takes over the mind. And many of us, we're in Babylon. We're drinking the wine of Babylon, this, you know, the wine, physical and spiritual wine. What wine? We're talking about doctrine, amen? So now we see that God is calling us out again, out of Babylon. We need to come out of Babylon. Amen. So God is calling us to come out of Babylon and we must be ready to come out of Babylon. Amen. Please let us come out, serve the Lord with all our heart. He didn't call us to serve him by feelings and emotion, but he called us to serve him based in spirit and in truth. Amen. So let us come out of Babylon. So we see God show us what is going to be. And if God said this, and if you notice, every kingdom have a certain time limit that they were on the scene. You understand? Every kingdom have a certain time limit. Ours is about to end soon. The mark of the beast is about to come upon us. We need to be ready and prepare for what is to come. Amen? So let's get ready. And not only get ready, but let us pray to God that we will stay ready because death can come at any time. All right. So as we get on our knees and pray for those who have knees to bow, bow your knees before our maker. You know, we come today to rest in the Lord. Last night we rest, right? When we went to sleep, rest in Jesus, get that sweet sleep. You know, you go to bed early. You know, um, you fall asleep, you know, you hit your bed by seven, eight o'clock, you go to bed. You know, Sabbath sleep is the sweetest. I don't know about you, but for me, it's the best. I'm telling you, it's so sweet. And you go to bed and you rest. And now you wake up. We're going to rest in the word of God now. Amen. We're going to praise him and thank him for who he is. Amen. So today now we're resting in the word of God. And depends on where you are. After, you know, you can go out. You can give literature. You can visit somebody. You can go pray for the sick. Those are the things we're supposed to do. We're supposed to do good on the Sabbath. Not that you don't do good on the other six days of the week. But, you know, the Sabbath is a beautiful time. Amen. To praise God. Praise the Lord. Because we do serve him during the week. Amen. But this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with what? Praise and be thankful unto him. Because God has taken us safely through the week. Amen. Safely through the week he has taken us. Amen. All right. Let us pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Father, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Blot out our transgression, they're ever before us. Lord, we pray that you will be seen, you will be heard. We pray, O oh God, that you will be with us. Bless us now, O oh Lord, and help us to get the understanding of what will be teach to us today, what we will learn in Sabbath school, O oh God. Guide us, we pray, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you, we praise you for who you are. Be with us now, and we ask for the Holy Spirit. Lead and direct, guide and protect us, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being a good God. Be with each and every one of us. Till the soil of our heart. Be with the presenter to their father. Help him to do your will, O oh God. Anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Bless our brother Orion. And be with him, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. And for those who did before. All that we're learning from the kingdom of um, okay. Babylon... Then we go to uh, Medes and the Persian and we Greece. And then we come down from Babylon, come all the way down to, to, to Rome. It's going to be a master test. Oh man, it's so beautiful to see what we learn. right? Because listen, the Holy Spirit cannot bring back to your memory what you have never studied. That's how the Holy Spirit will. So that's what I love about what our brother Orion does when we go through it. And then after, um, uh, if, if we take two weeks or three weeks to go through it, then after that we get a quiz to see what we remember and what we learn and it's beautiful so make sure you get your pen and your paper and be ready you know to go through um these quiz um, to go through so he's going to give us the information and we're going to retain them by god's grace 
so we can do the test after. Amen? Because remember, life itself is a test, you know. Every day we go through something. Amen? All right? So at this time, without further ado, our brother Orion will come to us. Please pray for him. Please pray for each and every one of us. And also pray for the young man who is on the, um, what do you call this? On the equipment, you know, that is handling um, the camera and everything. That is brother Orion. All right? So please, God bless. All right, praise God, everyone. Hey, Amen. I know last week I was supposed to come with this, but there was another plan for last week. And for those who were here, as Mom had said, we did the a master test that we'd went over before. You can bring the camera just a little higher, please. A master okay. test of that we did before, and um, you know, it's a blessing that okay. we we're able to do that because we we're able to see what everyone had. Learn mm -hmm. and retain from the past. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you know, it's a blessing that we can do that. Yes, yes, yes. It's a blessing that we could do that um, because a, a, a lot of things, you know, we're not, we're not here to put down anyone. We're not here to make anyone feel bad or anything. But, you know, a lot of things that we've gone over before, it's just, it's just amazing how we can go back over these things. To the grace of God. It's a blessing. Amen. Amen. Um, but for today, we're going to be going over Greece. We're going to be going over Greece. Amen. And this is going to be the history of the four great kingdoms, part eight. Right. And let me just get there real quick. Last time before, uh, I had two videos for you guys to see that was based on um, two videos before that was based on how the war with Alexander the Great went out and such. And in the span of 10 years, he was able to conquer almost all of the Persian Empire. Amen. But today, we're going to be looking at the rise and the fall, specifically on the rise of Greece. Because there's a lot of things we're going to cover, but I also want to crunch it all in a short amount of time here. All right, so let's get into this. Amen. So, but before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for another Sabbath. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Forgive us our sins and trespasses. And I pray, Father, that everything will go according to your plan. I pray that we all receive a blessing from this. Forgive us our sins and trespasses. Give us your Holy Spirit, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And I pray that all of those who are watching will receive a blessing as well. Help us to learn and grasp what I'm going to be um, uh, teaching today. And help us to open our hearts and mind even to the scripture that will be read as well in Jesus name Amen, amen. and yes for those who are on zoom as well it's interactive and everyone on zoom and the live stream and here remember that your Bible is mandatory I know we haven't been going over many Bible verses and going uh, a lot more into historical things but you know this isn't a history class amen but well, history Bible, yes, it, it, but it's not primarily, you know, this this Sabbath school is a primarily a history class. There is history lessons, but also we have to incorporate the Bible as well. Amen. Amen. So once again, we're looking over the history of the four great kingdoms unfolded. Let us go over our memory verse. Okay. Then in chapter two, verse 31 to 35, even if you remember just 30 what I believe is what 30 32 and 31 or 31 and 32 that's fine that's 30, or 30, 30 32 and 33 yes yes and that's that's just fine as well Go ahead, I'll show you. thou king saw us and behold a great image this great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee and the form thereof was terrible this image's head was a fine gold his breast and his arms were silver his belly and thighs of brass his legs of iron his feet part of iron and part of clay 
Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, that smote the image, which smote? which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold bro- broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone, which smote the image, that smote, that smote the image, for the whole became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Amen. Amen. Um, me do 32 or 33. Okay, go ahead. This image's head of fine gold. Also. This image's head was. Okay, sorry, sorry. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs, his legs of iron, his feet of part of His feet, feet part, part of iron. And part of, part of, iron. of iron and part of clay. Mm-hmm. And wait, wait, wait. Thou sawest till a stone was cut out. Thou sawest till that. Okay. Thou sawest, thou sawest till that a stone was cut out with our hand. Smote the image. Also. Which smote the Which image? Which smote the image uh, upon, upon his feet that was of iron and clay and break them to pieces? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Praise God. Let me see we can try the next one. Then the iron. Then what? Then, then, okay. was. Then, wa- then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces. To pieces. And together, together, okay, 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 and became like the chaff of a summer threshing, okay. of the summer threshing floor, and the wind, also, yes, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, mm-hmm. and the stone that smote the image, became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. And filled the whole earth. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. All right. Anyone else like to give it a try? Anyone who's on Zoom? Ah, uh, oh, let me go. You have brother Dwight. And then brother White. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. know her name. Mm-hmm. 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 And then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bren Bren. Sister Bren Bren. Praise God. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Bren. Amen. Says, Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image, this great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron, and part of clay. Thou sawest so that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Amen. So praise God for that. So, so you know, once again, that's from Daniel 2, verse 31 to 35. All right, so let's go over this now. The history of the four great kingdoms unfolded, part eight. Now, we went over Babylon, right? And a lot of things that were taken from Babylon also went uh, sprung into the Medes and Persians after Darius took over this. And then coming down to Xerxes against, um, uh, not her, Xerxes, Asuras, Asuras against uh, the Greeks, okay? And then what also stemmed down is that we have the mm. okay? Not to like what the next one was doing because mm-hmm. Alexander wanted um, the people to bow down and prostrate before him like he's a god. That's, that's what we're going over, not the rise and fall, excuse okay. me. So the, the Greece, no, 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 no. origin and structure. Of, um, uh, ancient Greek civilization, the period following the Messinian civilization, which ended about 12,000 or 1200 BCE to the death of scientific achievements that formed a legacy with unparalleled influence. The larger historical period spanning from the output of ancient Greece, Greek author Homer in the 8th century BCE to the decline of the Roman Empire in the 5th century CE is also known as classical antiquity, all right? Encompassing Greco-Roman culture, playing a major role in the Mediterranean sphere of influence and the creation of Western civilization, and shaping areas as diverse as law, architecture, art, language, poetry, rhetoric, rhetoric, Politics and philosophy. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. Um, we can see here where the influence, right? We spoke of it before. Mm -hmm. So where the influence of where even Rome had their influence. Okay. You see that Rome get their influence from the Greeks, which is the Rome is really just a a more compact version you can say of the Greeks, right? But we haven't reached there yet. But um, we also see that where the Greeks are concerned, a lot of different aspects of not education, but like a lot of different aspects of, you know, um, learning and a lot of uh, growth in the economy with all these different what they call achievements. OK. All right. Because it says it was a period of political, philosophical, artistic. Okay. Yes. I was going to say that. It went all the way to the dark age. In Gen when it, not Genesis. When you look in Revelation, right? Um, you look in Revelation chapter 13, you realize that... Um, the body of him. The body, exactly. It, it, right. And who, which, which kingdom in Daniel was the leopard? As we all well know, it's Greece. It's Greece. Right. So the larger part of it is Greece. And we mm -hmm. see it now, even in our educational system. That's why we have to take our children out of these education these public schools and stuff. We see it in government. You look at the structure. You look at the structures of things and everything. It's there. Mm -hmm. and, um, the, the head of the light. The head of it was Babylon. Yes, we still see Babylon, right? The feet of the bear, Medes and the Persian. That's what we see. But so you see the characteristics. But the bigger body is of the leopard. Amen. Amen. Let's keep moving. Saying, what was ancient Greece education? See, so here we are now. Mm -hmm. Primary education or paidia or pay, paid dia, I think that's how you pronounce it, literally learning, which in Athens was typically conducted in the home by private tutors, focused on basic literacy and numeracy. them tutoring home so let's look into the next part Hola. okay right just the same way as you know when you when when you get to a certain age like maybe those who are 18 19 around those age groups you know they they, they go on into college right 17 18 19 around those years they're going into college and such but they're looking into you know what they can do and what place they can get into i don't mean college i'm talking about the worldly college Right, and so, but we're gonna keep reading on. Can I? But, but what we notice is that, what we notice is that, what school did Jesus? You notice that Jesus did because at that time the language, what language was around? You know, it was Latin, Hebrew, and Greek, right? Mm -hmm. You see, that was the primary language that was then back in Jesus' time. Yes. And did Jesus go to their schools? No. No. Because what are they steeping? Philosophy and all of those things mm -hmm. that they were teaching. Okay, so Amen. Jesus didn't want to be, Jesus was not taught that way. You understand? Because when you, you know, when you go to college and stuff, they teach you about Socrates and what they are, Plato and what they are, you know, all of those mm -hmm. that people so focus on. You understand? Teach you all these foolishness. You understand? That, that, that is rubbish. You know, and, and, and that's what they teach. And, you know, and so Christ was not, didn't go to the rabbinical schools. No, he was taught at home. Our greatest teacher okay is nature you understand the bible nature you understand that's our greatest teacher and the holy spirit is behind it that teaches us the things of god how we can learn you understand instead of putting our children in these schools what do they learn once they you know even adventists who have gone to school and then they went off to colleges and stuff what they start to learn many of them come back and say they don't believe in god anymore okay mm. they don't tr they don't they don't follow god anymore now they become atheists right. nonsense right right all right, let's keep going. It says, in ancient Greece, education was highly valued. Okay. Just even as today where, you know, the worldly education is highly valued. Okay. And let me want to say something here that reminds, that's going to remind us just as today. Now, don't get me wrong. Nothing's wrong with education. It depends on what education are you learning. Okay. So in ancient Greece, education was highly valued and was considered essential for success in life. 
okay? So in this case here, just as today, many people think that when you enroll into college, right, when you go into college in these things and you're going to have a very successful life, okay, but they're the same ones telling you that you're going to have a successful life when they themselves are still paying off the debt, the school debt that, you know, that, that, that bondage, because, you know, debt is another way of bondage as well, okay? Remember that debt is bondage. It's not, it's not good for God's people to be in debt, amen? And so, therefore, they're in bondage for most of their life, even after what the world think is the successful way of life, amen? Children were usually, okay? The education required of such achievement, according to Plato, which we spoke about before, included an elementary education in music, poetry, and physical training, two or three years of mandatory military training, 10 years of mathematical science, five years of dialectic training, and 15 years of practical political training. So you see here, they, they had their own way of doing things, right? If I, if I go over that again, it says, you know, um, the education required of such achievement according to Plato. So they're giving the the achievement or the, that, that um, how can you say that? How can you, say, not award, but they're giving the, the honors mm -hmm. to Plato, okay, who, who included an ele elementary education for all these different subjects in the bottom, okay? So after you go through all these things, then you will have an essential and a successful life. If that's how life was supposed to work, you know, then have mercy because people put themselves in this mindset that school is the way to now, like I said, nothing's wrong with school. I'm talking about the world of education, okay? You know, everyone believes that school is the way to go when you want to achieve things in life, be successful. Right, be who you want to be, and all these different things. When in reality, it's just all a way to indoctrinate the people, especially God's people. Right, because you know, God's people. Some of God's people they feel that they need to go to the world, they need to go to Babylon to get their education, and because of that, oh, did something happen? No, no, okay, and, and because of that. Instead of rather going to God for help, instead of rather um, learning from God, from nature, the Holy Spirit, and the Bible, okay? Instead of learning those things, they rather go to the world because they want the world to tell them how nature works. All right? They want the world to tell them how God works. They want the world to tell them how education works and how, you know, your conscience works. And we know that our conscience is the Holy Spirit. All right? They want the world to tell us how we should behave, feel, and act. But yet still, that the way how the world is telling you to do it is the way to successful and a life full of freedom and achievements. You see how that's so lopsided? Mercy. All right, let's keep moving on. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. Turn your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. Can you read that for me, Mom? Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Romans 13, 1 to 3. That's All right. right. Romans chapter 13, reading from verse 1 to verse 3. Bless your words in Jesus' name. Amen. And it says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher power, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Verse 3, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Mm. All right. So as I said before, we'd rather have the world tell us 
how God works and how the Bible works and such, right? And the Lord will tell us not to listen to these things, but there is a power, amen, power in the blood and the power of God that still reigns. So for those who rather go look into Babylon for education, those who rather look into the world for education, just as, you know, the Greeks had their way of education and brought all the way coming down. Okay, so bear in mind, you may be the same one going to church. You may be the same one, you know, doing all these things for God, but yet still you're learning from who primarily? Who, who are you learning from? <laughs> you're learning from Greece. Amen. And it's the same thing, the same teachings, the same ideas and thoughts and ideologies that they come with and all the way till now. There's going to be something I'm going to read to you guys very soon and it's going to shock you all. All right. Mm -hmm. It's going to shock you all. I'm telling you right now. When I saw it myself, I was like, wow. It's a lot. All right. Let's keep going. Amen. As you know, the higher power is God. Some, some, and some people, they even go on to claim that, you know, I don't believe that, um, I don't believe that, you know, there is a, I don't, I'm not, in, I'm not a religious person, but I believe that there's a higher power, right? That's <laughs> foolishness. Okay. Of course, there is a higher power and a higher power is God. Amen. Amen. All right, so, you know, that's just a form of putting doubt into themselves, being afraid to believe in something and then end up being wrong. That's not called faith, okay? That's just called being timid and afraid. All right, let's move on. Titus chapter 3, verse 9. Titus chapter 3 and verse 9. And don't be afraid if you guys have anything you'd like to say. You can go ahead and... Uh, Unmute yourself or those that's for those who are on Zoom and for those who are on the live stream, you all can also if you want to say anything, you can just type it in the comment section. Amen. Alright, so Titus chapter three, verse nine, I'll read this here. It says, But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for Amen. they are unprofitable and vain. That's why we should also not be into politics as well. Many people will ask us, you know. What side, what side do you vote for? Who do you vote for, right? And I'm not just talking about Republican or Democratic. I'm just talking about anything in general concerning politics at all, right? We're not supposed to get into politics. You know, the only time we should vote is if they're voting something against God and we vote for God, amen? That's the only other th in politics. Now, I'm not forcing anyone. If you feel that it is your own thing to go ahead and vote and to put your mind around the feel of politics then go ahead you're trampling on the devil's playground but if that's what your heart wants you to do then go ahead all right but for god's people we do not vote amen go ahead mom all right it says but avoid foolish questions genealogies contention and strive about the law many people like to strive about the law mm -hmm. you know and the, especially the fourth commandment they like to strive about that and they like to get into heated debates and avoid, all right? Foolish questions and genealogies and contention and strive about the law. Because sometimes some people ask you things in regard to, in the Bible, so who did this, like who, you know, like questions like, exactly. who was Job's wife after? So if this, this and that, uh, no. What we have is what God gave to us and we're mm -hmm. supposed to be contented with what God gave to us. So, you know, there should be no conflict are uh, confrontation you know some people are very um what you call it some people are very confrontational and they don't understand that you know first of all what spirit are you using what spirit are you off why are you so confrontational why is it you know you, you always want to be in a battle and most people we also we study the word of god to argue you know we study to fight yeah to get, get in to debates because, yeah because we study to fight well i know more than you and this is this and that no that's not you see if you look at the spirit that jesus had it's not that spirit when you have the spirit of god you learn to be meek and humble anybody else even if we don't agree with them the way mm -hmm. we react to them it shows the spirit that we're carrying and then we tell ourselves the spirit we have and the spirit we're using is of christ no it's not because we need to examine ourselves so you know don't get into confrontation with people over the law or anything else like that you said genealogies and um and and striving about the law we have to you know and don't get me i will not argue with no one 
You know, it's from there. You but you know? know, the Bible is very clear as well. Because some people, they'll just read it to their own damnation. Yes. And then they'll think that they can do one thing when the Bible is actually telling them not to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay? But because they read it so one sided and they, they're surface reading and they don't dig deep, even after they say they may dig deep because they don't ask for the Holy Spirit while digging deep, they just end up twisting up everything. Okay? And that's, the, that's also Satan's way of thinking. Satan will just see the word and just twist it. All he did was just put not. Mm -hmm. Okay? In the Garden of Eden. Ye shall not surely die. That you take a word out and put another word that has somewhat of the same meaning. No. No, it doesn't work that way, man. Right. You had the Persian one right before. Mm -hmm. So let's see if you get the Greece one right. What was ancient Greece currency called? Uh, hold on, I said turn them off, turn them off. Hold on, hold on. Let me put the mic better. Oh, it's because it's connected to the heater. I'm putting the mic better. One second. Don't. That's the computer. Huh? Hold on, one second. Wait, one second. He, he forgot to put the thing on. It's turned up all the way. That's the computer. I don't know. Do you need help? Try now. Go ahead, Brother Dwight. I said, you heard me? See something? One second. Excuse me. Right now? Hello? Must be his mic. Here? Um, yeah, go ahead, talk. Dinero. Um, di dinar. Dinar? Let us see. Let us see. Drachma. Drachma. Ah, let's write this down. You gotta remember it's gonna be it's on called, the test. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's ancient Greece for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. We're not just talking about a uh, few years, like many, m not even few, many years on into Greece. Um, to see what's going on, someone else would have to unmute to see if you, you, you want to go in the room and see. Okay. So drachma is another, well, not another, but the, the word for it during ancient Greece time. Okay. So here it says. Drachma, silver coin of ancient Greece, dating from about the mid 16th century BC and the former monetary unit of modern Greece. The drachma was one of the world's earliest coins. Its name der derives from the Greek verb meaning to grasp, to grasp. Okay, so that's what it derives from. All right, and its original value was equivalent to that of a handful of arrows. The early drachma had different weights in different regions. From the 5th century BC, Athens gained commercial preeminence, and the Athen 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 Athenian drachma, drachma became the foremost currency. One drachma equaled six obli, or oboli. 100 drachmas e equaled one mine and 60 mine equaled one attic talent. So, yeah. I don't know, you know, you have to... That's, that was their currency during their time, you know, and it it's amazing to me that it says uh, its original value was equivalent to that a hand of a, of a handful of arrows. So I don't know what 
they would claim to be a handful of arrows, mm. right? But I guess however many, like the average person's hand, however many arrows it can hold, is, a, is it's about equivalent to that. And it says it was from the 5th century BC, Athens gained commercial preeminence and the Athenian drachma became the foremost currency. Right, so it became more of a broad currency led over all of Greece in its time. Mm -hmm. Ready to move on? Okay. No problem. As a result of the conquest of Alexander the Great, the Athenian drachma came to be the monetary unit of the Hellenistic world. In time, silver coins, one of drachma and its multiples, were debased and progressively higher proportions of copper were admixed. Okay. The, high, the drachma also became the prototype of an Islamic coin, the dirham. Nevertheless, as foreign invaders gained control in Greece, the, da, the drachma disappeared from use. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, as foreign invaders, when they come to Greece, what happens? The drachma disappeared from use, and that happened to not only just Greek currency, but many other different kinds of currency, yes. right? And that's why the currency goes down and down and down, right? So before when we spoke of that, you know, the Persians ha used gold, right? And yes, we're going to look at some of their coins as well. The, the, go the Persians used gold, right? But that wasn't their main thing. Okay, it was also silver. And then we see that the Greeks also used silver. What does it say here in the bottom? It says, and, it, it, and its multiples were debased, and progressively higher proportions of copper mm. were admixed. Okay, you know, copper is like a, 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 is like a, is like a brass, you know, it's the closest to, to a bronze color. Okay, as we know, what was the, the belly and thighs? Brass. Oh, amen, right? As we said before, you know, when Nebuchadnezzar had gold, mm -hmm. you know, their main currency was gold because the gold flourished, right? And then after the Medes came in along, silver. you know, the gold is still being used. And then the Persians, there was more silver being used. And then when now the Greeks, Greeks they come into place. I was talking of the ancient Greeks here. Um, another name for the Greeks, if you all remember, the Macedonian mm -hmm. Empire, right? The Greeks now, they come in and now they, ha they also have silver, but with silver, over time it progressively what? Copper. Higher proportions of copper were admixed. Mm -hmm. So the copper was mixed with the silver, right? Yeah. And what do we even have today? Now, you look at the penny. yeah, you look at the penny now. You know that the, the pennies and the quarters and dimes before had a higher value than the pennies, the quarters, and the dimes we have now today, mm. right? And now they're even changing. I don't know if you realize, but I think since 2022 or 2023, I don't remember which year, but they've sort of changed the looks. They refined the looks of the pennies, the quarters, and the dimes, especially the quarters. They look completely different. Mm. I don't have them here because we're not talking about them today, but that's just a throw in there. They look completely different. For those that have a quarter, if you find if you have a quarter from 2017 and a quarter from 2022 or 23, I mean, and 24 around this time now, you know, you look at them both, and you realize even though one may look shinier than the other, mm -hmm. one of them feels lighter than the other, mm -hmm. and one of them is thinner than the other, and it's the newer coins that are now becoming less and less valued, right? Oh, thank you very much. And um, we see where even the drachma also became the prototype of an Islamic coin. Okay, so what does that sound like to you? Obviously, currency was being given and currency was being held off because also the Greeks also shared a currency with the Egyptians as well. Mm. Right? That, that's also another thing. I, d I don't have that here today though, but there's if you look at the coins, you realize some of the things that will look similar yes. to what... Uh, the Egyptians had, right? But now what I'm speaking on, yeah, the Egyptians and Greeks, they, they had similar oh. looking coins, yeah. 
And so, um, but, you know, where it reminds me of America even today to where, you know, they went, they, they can go places and they, they also give their currency to some places, right? So that way they, their, the original currency they have won't be diminished. So currency can help other currencies. And you see here, the drachma became a prototype of an Islamic coin. Okay, now, whatever reason that happened for, that's, you know, that was their thing. But um, um, you can also imagine that the, the Roman coins as well, who remember, you know, with uh, Israel, with Jerusalem, the Roman coins are also used in those countries as well, right? Remember it says, given to Caesar. Yes. Who what is Caesar? This inscription. Right? Uh, yes. Exactly. So you can see there that certain currencies, and it's not that the, the, the Jews didn't have their own currency. The Jews had their own currency, but whose currency had to help their currency not be diminished? Mm -hmm. The Romans. Yes. Exactly. Amen. So currencies are really, um, it's one of those things to where it's really important. And that's why even with the merchants and trust, that's why they're going to fall after the beast. Why? Because the merchants is what is, is able to um, give out and do certain things, but they can't do without the permission of the beast, can they? No. Right? And that's why the whole world will worship the, after the beast. Wander after the beast. Right? Why is that? Because they're coming all into an agreement. That's why with this whole um, uh, computer money system, right, that they want to come up with, and make it into a one world thing. They want to make the whole world be of one currency. That's what they want to do. And if you can make the whole world into one currency, that means there won't, there won't be any, no longer will, can you go to one country and use your American dollars to buy something. Because guess what? Your currency is going to be the same as the, as, you know, the other country's currency. And you know what that's going to bring up? Right now that now that there's no longer going to be a sh uh, a demanding in power or how can I say it? like to where America and, you know, you have the pounds in in Britain as well, where, you know, those two things are the strongest holding currencies in the world today. Now it's all going to be on one flat surface. Everyone's going to be the same thing. Hmm. So that way it's easier to control. Mm -hmm. It's easier to do those things. Right. So that's what they're coming to. And that's why. You know, when you look down at the feet of the image in, in Daniel, what is it? It's iron and clay. Okay. So we so you can clearly see they're still being influenced of um of um of Roman and of, of Romanism, right? But then they also have the clay as well showing the diminish. Okay, showing the diminish and the the the, the, the Babylon um way of controlling things right you know even we have the ten toes we haven't gotten there yet we haven't gotten to the, the feet of the iron and clay right we're on the belly and brass right now amen so but we're going to keep moving amen <clears throat> when Greece finally achieved its independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1828 the phoenix was introduced as the mon monetary unit its use was short lived however and in 1832, the phoenix was replaced by the drachma adorned with the image of King Otto, who resigned, I mean, who reigned as modern Greece's first king from 1832 to 1862. The drachma was divided into 100 lepta. In 2002, the drachma ceased to be legal tender after the euro. Okay. Mm. You, you, do you know what the euro did? The euro is what brought countries like Italy, right? Countries like Greece and all the other countries that are in the European area. And it brought their currencies together. Mm. And you see what it did? It made it to where if they want to switch, if they want to switch to, um, what do they call it? To, to, um, not euro if they want to switch to computer money it won't be hard they've actually been talking about it for so many years even places in um even places of the uk are still being in, in inspired by such you know um 
European uh, tendencies to where some of, so for people in the UK have to use their phone. You can't use cash anymore, right? Mm. Some places in, in, in the UK, you can't use cash anymore. Cash. Right, amen. My mom just says they charge you if you use cash in the UK. All right? Some places, some places, some places amen. And so on, um, but it says in 2002, the drop must cease to be legal tender after the euro, the monetary, monetary unit of the European Union became Greece's sole currency. So when the European Union came together, right, what became Greece's sole currency? Euros. All right. And so you can see there, and, and the whole point of euros is not, is not meant to make a country strong. You know that, right? It was actually just made to give them a currency that the whole other European countries can also use and rely on. And that, that doesn't mean some of the European countries just only go based off of euros alone. But just like when you had the Jews using Caesar's um, coins, the same thing how many of the European countries are also um, using the European coins and not their own coins anymore. So when you don't have your own coins, guess what happens? Your currency diminishes, right? When you don't have your own coins, when, when your coin's being corrupted, your currency is slowly being diminished. All right, let's keep going. So there we go. That's, mm -hmm. their, that's the euro coin now, mm -hmm. right? It says uh, to, uh, 1821, 2000 to 2000. 21, mm -hmm. right? So can I say, um, we can see that it has the development, just like how you see the European Union thing is, you mm -hmm. see it have that wreath around it, mm -hmm. and the stars, and it is using gold and silver. So it's like it is Babylon and, and, um, and Media Persian and everything. So everything is mixed in. So, uh, so you would find everything mixed in in this one thing, and I'm sure if you look deep within the grass, it's in there too, you know, and everything that is mixed into this. Wow, interesting. Yes, yes, but you know, it's only plated. It's not r the real, a real gold or silver. <laughs> right. It's only so plated. It's more like brass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's just copper, you yes, know. Yes, amen. Right. All right. So then, this is the old coins now here. See, mm -hmm. you can see some of which um, influences they also had from the Egyptians as well. Right, you see all these men here, and this is another one here. Um, so you see, you have uh, from 895 to 480 BC, you know, and you have 490, 4, 449 to 413 BC, you know, you have 160 to 157 BC, as you realize it's going down and not up. If you remember, BC goes what down, down and AD goes what yeah. up, right? Now, so now we're in the AD, amen. And you have 2004 AD to where you have the coin there. But you realize on the bottom to where they have, now they got rid of the coin with the face on it, right? They got rid of the coin with the face on it. But if you look on the bottom, what do you see on the bottom? What animal do you see on the bottom? You mean the owl? Yes, the owl, right? That's also an Egyptian uh, influence there coming you know, that's an Egyptian influence that Greece also used as well. Because these countries were, you know, they complemented each other mm -hmm. in some ways, right? So that's how they work. Then you have, what was, what has the world taken from ancient Greece? All right. Mm -hmm. What has the world taken from ancient Greece? Mm -hmm. All right. So Greek, and, and this isn't the part that would shock your mind either. We, we, aren't, we, we haven't reached there yet. But Greek people have made major innovations. Now tell me if this sounds just like today, okay? Greek people have made major innovations to mathematics, astronomy, chemistry, engineering, architecture, and medicine. Other major Greek contributions include being the birth of Western civilization, hear this out now, democracy, Western literature, history, Western logic, political science, physics, theater, comedy, drama, tragedy, lyric poetry, biology, Western sculpture, Olympic games, Western philosophy, ancient Greek law, Greek mythology, 
Greek food and the Greek alphabet. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Everything is still the same. Even the very English I'm speaking right now has, has you know, it, it, it contains a Greek, it also has a, a Greek origin, right? So you see here it says, other major Greek contributions include being the birth of Western civilization. So what gave, so who influenced the Western civilization? Greek. I mean, Greek. Well, Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And you can see it also in our building, and mm -hmm. as we have rightfully said, you know, we see it in government, we see it in our education, you know, we see it in everything that around us. You see the Greek thing. The, 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 the Greek is very strong in everything that we do. Amen, amen. Brother Dwight, you have anything to say? Right. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Brother Dwight? Don't be. Yes, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Um, it just fascinating coming down the line, like Orion was saying, about how the money change, how it devalue, and something that just like what you see. Brother Dwight, yeah. I don't mean to cut you, but check if you're covering your, your, your mic. Check if you're covering no, over did, your I mic. I did, I did, I did. I'm sorry. I was saying, back to you, Father, forgive me. Um, as I was saying that, as Orion was breaking it down and showing you how the money devalue, just like our um, money in America devalued down to dollar, and it will go down to nothing. Like it was on gold standard, now it's on mm -hmm. back by nothing. It back, it back. The money in America backed by we the people, not, not nothing else. It's stand up on no ground on, it, on its own. They have no backing. And this country forced everybody else to take their dollar, and now they're trying to move away. So, anyhow, they try to lower interest rate dollar go collapse eventually gonna have to collapse anyway because it designed that way so that this whole mark of the beast the whole system gonna come down to you um digital money you know digital money is like oh digital money set up are you before digital money it used to be like um how people used to get food stamp and all them stuff it used to go one way people used to sell it now they kind of make it kind of digital and the same way they're gonna do with the paper money, with the, with the, uh, with this money, they're trying to rein in everything that nobody. You can't give no kids money now. Nah, if I borrow money from you, I'm gonna pay you back. So it just the way how the whole system is coming down, and then you know it gonna lead to the mark of the beast, and then you know once people who believe in the word of God, like what we're trying to manifest in our head and stay strong towards Christ. We're gonna be marginalized. They're gonna be like we the trouble of we the trouble of the you know of the world. So mm. that's what I gotta say about it. So you, I can really see how this thing is tending. And before I was on a different faith, I never knew when I used to heard about this one, you know, everybody all religion go come to one. I used to be like can't be can't happen. Crazy. Then as God showed me through his word. That's what it's gonna be. I accepted what it's gonna be, and that's what it's gonna be. That's all I got to say. Mm. Amen. Amen. And also, um, Brother Oren, if you look at how even if you go back and look at the the, the Congress as you we have here now, it's the same type of setup, and we see that Rome followed the same mm -hmm. thing as well. You know. Amen. Amen. You know, I'll tell you something surprising here as well. This won't be in your test, by the way. But in the <laughs> 1960s, you know that a house, you know, when you pay, a house could cost $13,000 mm -hmm. in the 1960s, okay? And then for rent, you can pay $60 a month. That is how far America, if you look at today, and if $60 then, even be two thousand a month. You're looking at. You're talking about mortgage. Not just only mortgage, but even renting, could oh, be yes. even sixty. About uh, above two thousand. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, then that's just the 1960s, when houses would cost even thirteen. The most you the most the most.
The most you're looking at a house is twenty thousand, right? Thirty thousand dollars for a house. You, you still find an issue. Even a thirty thousand dollar car today can still have issues. Okay, brand new, and still have um, fatal issues to it because of the manufacturer don't have the money to do certain things it can do now. Now, if you go, that's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. But I'm just telling you how far the American currency has dropped. Okay? A hundred years ago, you, 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 can, you can buy clothing for like five, not less than five dollars. You can buy clothing for like a dollar. Okay? You can get a shirt less than a dollar. Right? It could be 25 cents or less or even no, 10 cents for a pair of socks. Nowadays, you're looking at, you can even be looking at $15 a pair of socks. And it's just for your only two feet to keep them warm. And it could be this thin and it could still cost $15. Go ahead. Um, well, look at this now. Look at this now. I just said, that. look at this now. You see what they did? They created. They create the, the, uh, the V and flood the market with money. Mm -hmm. And then said, look, we give you this because of that. And then now they want to rein in about the money. So they raise, they have to raise the interest rate to rein in about the money and make we the people suffer. Because mm -hmm. food, for instance, food never be that expensive. I remember, it's not like gas price where we used to fluctuate. Because if they turn the money to where I tell them they're going to turn it to the digital money, there's no way you can trade, you can't do nothing. So everybody gonna be in a mind, in a buying depending on the government. So for for for, for resource or whatever it is. So mm. it, it just it, I just see you can see it's just like how um the Bible said that um it's like a pregnancy go be in travail. Everybody gonna be in travail for food. And everybody gonna to turn to the government. The big brother that way you know I'm gonna call. But you know, um, big testimony of that. Last year, what we could last year when you go to the store, last year even two years ago or before the big C happened in 2019, you know what we go to the store and buy now, you know I will come out the store with. We come out with you come out with many bags. Now, when you go in the store now and you're coming out, you'll be asking yourself, what did I buy? Why is this so much? You know, so you know, we, we pay attention and we see that everything, you know, inflation and everything, everything is it's tending because the mark of the beast must come on the scene. So that's why everything is heading this way. Exactly. You know, America is in trillions of dollars in debt. Mm -hmm. Right? And so you know, you have inflation. Ever since inflation became something, you know, it put the people in a sensation of fear. Now, some people see it as a way of, oh, we can make money, you know, because some people, you know, they, they, um, they can raise the prices of living. They can raise the prices of, you know, uh, the rent and all these different things. It's like, look, we're in, we're in inflation right now, you know. So, but... With all these things, you know, we we all know we all will know that there's going to be a one world order, and in their sense, here's what they're going to say. They're going to want to say to get rid of these things, to put your put your dependence on us and not your own dollars. We'll give you this, and we'll give you this, and you know, if you just so long ago put your trust in us, then you will no longer have to worry about inflation or fluctuations of prices you know why do you think people even have why do you think they even come up with this whole thing about you know having a credit score and mm. such it's to help with these same very things it's them saying oh well you know since you've been using your money and since you've been paying your things on time since you've been doing these things on time and such how about we give you a little complimentary here that, that's literally all it is right because you did this and such forth on time. It's like, it's like they're treating you like a pet or, or like a dog. Huh? But look, at this, look at this scenario. Look at this scenario. For instance, the government borrow money. Mm -hmm. 
and they keep borrowing money and they say and, and, and then they look to us to pay taxes and all kind of taxes you get your paycheck you gotta pay taxes we gotta manage our money and if we borrow money from the government or whoever we borrow it from the bank whatever we gotta pay it back with interest they borrow money and supposed to pay it back with interest too but they borrow money and they pay whatever they pay back and they still borrow more money so they never gonna ever come out of debt and the debt ceiling just keep going higher and higher so and then now they tell us to trust them it's just like even medical pay our farmers farmers you never only sick people can get taken care of if you go to the government for a relief you ain't gonna get no relief from them mm. it's just crazy that's all i gotta say all right Mm. And um, Brother Orion, before you um, continue, also we recognize, as Brother Dwight says, would the government buy the money, but who pay it back? We have to pay it back, you know. But you know, the taxes and stuff that they charge us, we have to pay it back. But you know that, <clears throat> even with you know, my mom learned this when she had pulled me out of school, but um, you know, we owe the government nothing because. If you're born into the system, when you're born into the system, what they do is that the bank owns you now. And they put you into something called the rat race. Okay? To where from young, you're in school, the school's making money off of you mm -hmm. as a child. You get older, right? And then now you're like, oh, now it's time for college. Who's going to make money from you still? Mm -hmm. The college going to make money from you. Right? And so then after you go from college, you go into the workforce, they still making money off of you. So no matter where you go, because you're born into the system and they make it the only way to survive is to be in the system. You know, we owe the government nothing. They've been making money off of us for so long. We owe them nothing. And that's why we usually when a child isn't in the system, it's harder to get health insurance. It's harder to do certain things for the child because why? First off, we're not even supposed to be connected to that health insurance, right? Because all they're just going to do to us is just, um, if it's not anything serious, they're just going to point us straight to drugs, and which is still, what, it, what does it do? It's still, they're still making money off of us. So it's all in a rat race. They just keep us in this thing to where, you know, it's a cycle of us going through and spending money and getting money and spending money and getting money, right? To where there's come to a point where when people start spending more than getting more, that's when they're going to switch into the di digital system. That's when they're going to be like, you know what? Enough is enough. We're going to put you guys out of your misery. We're going to give you this here and hopefully you'll be happy with it. Because guess what? Now, say if you're low on money, we can top you guys off. It's digital, right? But that's the mindset they want to put us in. Go ahead, Mom. And also, you know, they not only make money up, because that is when I first find out that when I pulled, you know, when I had pulled you out of public school, that the school was losing money. And you didn't even know that because it's, per, you know, how much children in the school is how they allotted the money, right? So mm -hmm. the school lose money when you take your child out of the school. Not only do they make money up of that, God forbid if you end up in the prison system, that's another money again. You mm -hmm. When you're there, they make money off of you. And as a person who had worked in the prison system, you recognize why would they sell like cigarettes in prison? Because it is a money making thing. Exactly. Right? They make money off of you in the system. That's why they come in jail. And if you look at most schools, they build like prisons. So they're left from one to the next, you know? So that's how it goes. It's, it's all about and making money. But a lot of the rooms, you know, they don't, they don't even have windows, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. All right, let's keep going. So look here, yes. right? You have the Lincoln Memorial here, okay? Huh? No, we didn't go to this slide yet. No, did we go? Oh, oh, do we go there? Yes, 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 we did, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is the Lincoln Memorial here, and then what do you have here, right? Right. This is the ancient Greek structure. Okay, this. Right, Rome followed as well. The same exact thing. You see those pillars? Mm -hmm. The same pillars here. Mm -hmm. Same pillars here, Nasty. right? The same understanding, the same, you know, way of thinking. Okay, you have the U.S. Supreme Court here, right? And what do we have next over here? Another ancient Greece structure. Okay, it's all constructed like America built their 
their places out of the mind of thinking on Greek architecture. Because who came up with those things? The Greeks, right? Hold on. The Greeks come up with these things. Um, Amen. Brother Oren, you're more efficient. Can you check? Because I just got a message that we're glitching. Oren will show you. Okay. Is it sounding better now? Uh, is it better now? I'll ask her. Okay. Continue. All right, Father in heaven, yes. I pray for the equipment and that everything goes according to your plan. Guess I've seen the trespasses and I pray for the internet, Father. Um, help us to learn from what is being said and to know that what happened in the past will happen again for us to repeat itself but thank you for your word that is that we have to warn us and to show us the things that will happen and take place forgive us our sins and give us your Holy Spirit in Jesus name Amen alright so once more I'm speaking on the structure, mm -hmm. we're looking at the U.S. Supreme Court, and then we have here another ancient ruin of the Greeks, mm -hmm. right? Okay, um, do it real quick then. One moment. And turn, up, turn that thing upright so you can see what's going on. Thank you. But yes, we see the similarity, or it's not even just similar, it's the exact same thing, okay? It's more like the exact same thing that they have in America that they also had way long before in Greece, Amen. ancient Greece to be exact. All right, so I'm going to go somewhere. You guys won't be able to see it. But for those who are here in person, you will be able to see it. But you guys over there, I'll just read it to you. It's a website here I want to look into. So now here, this here, I'm not going to read everything because there's a whole bunch. Okay. But this is what's just going to blow your guys' mind. Yes, yes, yes. It's coming from the Wikipedia here. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. But it's the alphabetical list of Greek inventions. And when I tell you, this thing goes and goes and goes and goes. It, it goes for a long time. So I'll just go through it real fast. Not through all of them, of course, but yes, anything that stands out, I'll read that. Okay, so starting with A, you have, uh, you have something like uh, acrolith. And acrolith is a composite sculpture made of stone together with other materials such as wood or inferior stone such as limestone as in the case of a figure whose clothed parts are made of wood while the exposed flesh parts such as head hands and feet are made of marble the wood was covered either by drapar, dra drapery or by uh, gilding this type of uh, statuary was common and widespread in classical antiquity. Now, another thing, aerodynamics. Did you know that that was also come from the Greeks as well? Mm -hmm. Okay, like what we know today, you see how the shape of your cars are? Most car shapes are for the sake of what they call aerodynamics, right? To help with uh, fuel efficiency, gas, and um, to also help with uh, just cutting through the air smoothly all those different things right so modern aerodynamics only dates back to the 17th century but aerodynamics forces have been harnessed by humans for thousands of years in sailboats and windmills fundamental concepts of continuum drag and pressure gradients appear in the work of Aristotle and uh, Archimedes right 
So also another thing here, air and water pumps. Cestiobius and various other Greeks of Alexandria of the period developed. Okay. So, so it's glitching. glitching. Yes. yes, I see that. I see that. It's all right. Um, but it says Cestiobius and various other Greeks of Alexandria of the period developed and put to practical use various air and water pumps which served a variety of purposes such as water Oregon and by the first century AD Heron's, Heron's fountain then you have a next all right, I'm just gonna go through these all not all of them but I'm just gonna read it but I can't read all the stuff to it if you guys want to do the okay if you guys want to do the uh, what they what they call it. if you guys would like to do the um look up the definition on these things that is up to you okay but i'm just going to keep on moving from here okay so you have alarm clock alchemy algebra um analog computer anarchism okay you have an arc bridge you also have artificial intelligence things that you know um not necessarily they made up, but they have um, come up with, right? The the and artificial intelligence also has a lot to deal with Greek theology, believe it or not. Um, automatic doors, automation, ballista, bathtub, BlackBerry. I was surprised to see this. Mm -hmm. That BlackBerry, the phone, the BlackBerry phone, mm -hmm. is also a Greek Canadian businessman, you know, Mike Lazari, Lazari this founded Blackberry. So the founder of Blackberry is Greek. Okay. Mm. You also have calisthenics, a caller ID, cameo, a cano lock, a cannon, a catapult, cement, a central heating, a chain drive, cheesecake, you have um we could go in here a clock tower mm. communism uh you have a crane machine you have a curtain okay it just keeps on going an elevator and these are and uh when it means by things created by Greeks it also means people who are also Greek as well who make these things. A flamethrower, fire hose, fire pump, uh, football. <laughs> Are you back now? Okay, now make sure the other, the original stream didn't end. Go to YouTube real quick. All right, praise God. All right, so you also have railway, mm. sawmill, screw, screw press, a shower, gymnasium, socialism, Sociology, uh, spiral staircase, streets, streets, a sponge, a stadium, steam engine, steam powered device, streets, syringe, technology, feeder, once again, thermometer, thesaurus. Okay, what else we have here? A vending machine. Okay. Let's, we could read that real quick. It says, The first vending machine was described by Heron of Alexandria. His machine accepted a coin and then dispensed a fixed amount of holy water. You ever hear this yet? <laughs> that, that, was, that was before Jesus came on the scene, you know? Wow. That was BC, isn't it? Before yes, I believe so. All right. When the coin was deposited, it fell upon a pan attached to a lever. The lever opened a valve which let some water flow out. The pan continued to tilt with the weight of the coin until it fell off, at which point a counterweight would snap the lever back up and turn off the valve. Wow. Okay. So what else? They have a water mill, a wheelbarrow. And we see that the wheelbarrow was in 406 BC. So as I said, the holy water mm -hmm. was before Jesus. Mm -hmm. You have a windmill. Wreath, as we all know, that also and come the from. Sundial. 
Mm -hmm. Another thing, you have the last one here, zoology. Ah. Okay, although concept of zoology as a single uh, coherent field arose much okay. later, coherent field mo wrote, arose much later, the, zoolog the zoological science emerged from natural history reaching back to biological works of Aristotle and Galen in the ancient Greco-Roman world. Mercy. So it just keeps going, right? There's so much. So Greece keep and, on giving. Mm -hmm. And there's so much other things that, you know, that was still there that I didn't even read because it was just a lot to read, right? And so that's just a bunch of the things that they made. But we're also going to read Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. I don't know about you, but that had blew my mind reading all those things because I never, I didn't know that they had, um, I understood that, you know, through the politics and all those different things, the, the, the way how people build the buildings, right? And all such things. It, I never knew that it went that far to even, you know, with current technology and all these different things to even a vending machine Can I say something for holy right? water. Go ahead. When the word of God said there's nothing new mm -hmm. under the sun, what was? <gasps> Will be. Will be. Amen. 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 So Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 8 to 10 <coughs> says, All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with hearing, nor the ear filled with he um, excuse me, the eyes not satisfied with seeing, mm -hmm. nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Amen. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It hath been already of old time which was before us. As I said right. before, even a vending machine Amen. was before us. I would never have known that if you hadn't done that because I thought vending machine is in our time. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, even things as aerodynamics, the flow. Mm -hmm. I thought those things were uh, more of such things with... Um, the Wright Brothers? Yeah, like the Wright Brothers and such, you know, when they, the, the first airplane was built. Okay? I mean, there's a whole lot of history that has been, you know, that hasn't been looked into like it's there to look at but many people blind themselves to it rather than searching out for themselves and seeing what was will happen again right because we know there's nothing new under the sun and as history repeats itself many of these inventions that man thinks that they are that they made and built has already been built uh, you know before um they were born or before they even had the idea of coming up with, with such inventions. Let's keep moving on. So, which flag is the old flag of Greece? I want you guys to give a guess. Which flag is the old flag of Greece? It's a little, uh, it's a little, uh, um, a little quiz here for you guys. Which flag is the old flag of Greece? All right, so which one is the old one? Now, the one on my right looks like Israel's I, I'll go on the one on the left. The one on the left? Mm -hmm. Okay. O'Shane? Ask Brother Okay. Brother the white? The first is the right one. The left or right? The one with the blue and the white? Yeah, it almost looks like Israel's flag. All right. Anyone else on Zoom? We want to give a guess on which flag is the old flag of Greece? Even though, e even for those who are in on um, on YouTube as well on the live stream, um, pray that all works well with the internet. But you can also comment down below which flag is the old flag of Greece. Okay, the one on the left or the one on the right. All right, so we all have an answer. Yeah. All right, which so which one do you choose, O'Shane? I'll pick the red one, but I think I just want to be O'Shane. Which one? You have to be confident. Which one? The red one? No. Okay. You're correct. All of you who chose the red flag mm -hmm. is the old flag of Greece. Yeah, you are correct. Greece flag now is blue and white, that's all? Yes, that yes. is the current flag now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, th there wasn't no specific information on why it changed, but... I have it, I have it with the red one. 
Nice, nice. So, you know, which flag is the old flag of Greece? The one on the left-hand side, the red. Which, the, yeah, the red and a dark blue, right? Mm -hmm. And it has the upside-down V. Yeah. Which, you know, I, I think it's supposed to be an A for Athens. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But you have the one on the, the right-hand side, which is the new one now, right? The modern one, the one of today's time. And you can see there's a huge difference between both flags. Mm -hmm. So, what worship is the Greeks heavily into? Um, I would say nature worship, paganism. Yes, it's also Hellenism. Mm -hmm. What a name. Oh, well, I mean, Hellenism. What a name. Remember when I spoke on after Alexander the Great, after he took over majority of the Persian Empire, what started to become something that spread around uh, the whole of Greece and the other um, and the other uh, places as well. Hellenism was the religion that was spreading across that um, Alexander the Great, well, I'm not even going to call him the Great, but Alexander, you know him, um, he made it more popular and more of the, the theme of of worship amongst the countries. So what worship is the Greeks heavily into? Hellenism. Because Hellenism is in practice primarily centered around polytheistic and animistic worship. Devotees worship the Greek gods, which include 12 Olympians, divinities and spirits of nature, such as nymphs, underworld deities, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, is that Chitonic, Chitonic gods and heroes? Emphasis on the lowercase g. <clears throat> Ancient Greece theology was polytheistic based on the assumption that there were many gods and goddesses as well as a range of lesser supernatural beings of various types, as they'd also call demigods, which we do not believe in. Amen? Amen. Let's move on. What do we know is the most is that the most common religious practices were sacrifice and pouring of libations all to the accompany uh, uh, company, accompaniments accompany, accompaniment of prayers in honor to their god Lord, um uh, to, yes but to their god mm -hmm. Right. Yes, gotcha. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Emphasis on the lowercase g. Amen. Once again, the animal sacrifice were usually pigs, sheep, goats, or cows, and always the same sex as the god which was being honored. Once again, you know, so they bring as they want. They do as they please. Right. But who do you think they take this whole pigs sacrifice? Who do you think they take this whole sacrifice prayer thing from? Or who do you think they take it from? Right? Okay. Answers? Rabbi? No. Egypt. Egypt. No. They take this from God. Oh, if you realize, you exactly. Oh, you. Oh, okay. They take a lot. You see, a lot of religions will take their ideologies and thinking from God and twist it completely mm -hmm. to do their own things. That Look, they even bring pigs. You think God would ever allow pig an yes. unclean animal mm -mm. to be sacrificed? I never hear of cow being a sacrifice either, no. So, but can I say something? Dr. Go ahead. Um, you, you, you name out the pig, the sheep, the goats, and it says they're always the same sex mm -hmm. as the God, the God, hidden God, which was being honored. If you look at it, like in, even in, you see, you see pan, Right? Hmm. Goat feet, man torso down, goat feet and the rest, you know. You know, you see that's that that's a Greek thing. That's hmm. one of their gods, you know. If if you look at how they have their thing. Wow. Yes, well I did not want to go over their whole structure and the setting of their gods and you such. You don't own any infrastructure but yes. Okay, I, yeah, I was saying I did not want to go over their whole structure and how mm -hmm. their whole thing what gods go and such. I'm not here to teach you that. Right. Mm -hmm. just to give you mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm just giving you an insight on these things mm -hmm. so you can see for yourself where history is being repeated. Amen. Amen. And um, 
Exodus chapter 20, verse 2 to 6, as we close. We all know what it says. Amen. You know, and as I said before, Satan and his people will take what is of God and will twist it completely because, you know, it's not Satan who just come up with these ideas of order, government, and all these different things. Yeah, he took it from heaven and brought it down here on earth and told the men how to structure their things, told the men how to do their things and such, right? Making their own mini heaven here on earth, but full of corruption and sin. Have mercy. So, as you know, we could just go over this and say it together. Exodus 20, verse 3 to 6 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showed mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Amen. Amen. So I pray y'all that we keep God's commandments. We understand that we have to separate ourselves from Babylon. You know, Greece is no different than Babylon was. It's all in the same body, right? Only difference is that the, the, the chest and the arms is just separating the head from the belly and thighs, but it's still in the same body. Okay? So... At the end of the day, they're all the same thing. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. You know, nothing is new under the sun. And because of that, they come with the same ideology and the same thinking. And so many people, they don't know the history. They fall to it so quickly. And they think it's the best thing since sliced bread. Mm -hmm. So have mercy, right? Now, I understand many of these inventions that came from Greece. Not that they're all bad. Don't get me wrong. They're not all bad, right? But they can be used for bad. And depending on how you let it control you, how you let Babylon control you, okay, how you let the system control you, and how you let the system control your children, and how you let the system control your way of thinking, how you spend your money, okay, even the day you worship on, okay, that's up to your choice. But it's because you do not know your history. And even if you do know your history and you rather would be a hypocrite and would fall to these things instead that is also because of your choice you know God's people will will perish because of lack of knowledge and for the same exact reasons the church is going into politics and things it should never go into I'm talking about the Seventh-day Adventist church okay that even soon even the very day that God says to remember they'll forget Mm. and they already do it without even having to worship on another day by them not keeping the Sabbath day holy, right? So where do you stand? You know, just as much as there is a, a, a spiritual Babylon, Greece is still shining as well. Okay, its teachings and its spots are still there, vivid and live in front of all of our faces. How are we going to take care of this? Okay, we as God's people, we have to be a peculiar people. We can't be as Greece is. We can't go in the ways of teaching in their teaching look at Daniel and the three Hebrew boys okay they stood against the teachings of Babylon and because of that what happened to them they flourish through the grace of that they flourish now yes there's going to be a persecution coming because they're going to look at us and blame us for their own problems you see but because these things are prophesied they'll come to pass and I pray God that we're all on the right path amen so, praise God for that. Anything we'd like to share or add before I close with a word of prayer? Anyone in Zoom? Is there anything you'd like to say before we close out this section? All right. Just pray that we see, for me, I just pray that we see and understand that what was will be, as the Bible clearly teaches, a young preacher man just share. There's nothing new under the sun. What was, will be. And we can't mm-hmm. say this is a new thing because I didn't even know Blackberry comes from so far. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, we see these things that are happening. We see it in the education. We see it in the government. And we even see it in the churches, you know, the house of worship. That, you know, Greece, Greece has not left the scene. All right? Mm-hmm. Greece has moved on. And you see it in the Roman structures. And you still see it here in modern time. 
you know and you know we see physical babylon then all the way down to spiritual babylon and we're in spiritual babylon god is still calling us to come out of her my people and don't partake of her sins so you know god is an awesome god he's wonderful he's still merciful and he's still calling us so we need to you know add amen. here amen. amen um you know is this a lot of things that we went over do you want to test or would you like to go over the rise and fall of uh, Greece. This one, you have a lot of things in here to quiz us out of some. Okay, so you want me to test that? Yeah, that would be great All if right, you test no us problem. on what we did this week. Because as far as I see, there's a lot of things that you you have here. You could draw, you know, a lot of tests for next week. Yes, because after that... I won't be here. Right, you're going exactly. to go over two weeks. Yes, yes, yes I understand. That. All right, so praise mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. so, all right, so, no, so now a new memory verse. Amen. New, or well, not new. The same memory verse. verse. Sorry. <laughs> I, I got to take that new part out of there. Hmm? Yes. Let's read the memory verse. All right. You, you want to read it? Okay. Yes. Let's go ahead. It says, Daniel 2, verse 31 to 35. Well, was there anyone on. stood before thee and the form thereof was terrible you know the fact that this image stood bright mm -hmm. we can clearly see where it's getting dim mm -hmm. and it has gone dim yes Amen. yes Amen. dim as ever you know when you shine light on gold it, it shines bright mm -hmm. silver has a bling to it but you know brass mm -hmm. you know that shine tones down and then iron you know yeah. it toned down and then look at the feet you know Amen. The feet just iron and clay. Mm. No brightness, nothing from it. But Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, you see and you know the condition of what this world is in. But like the, the last few, the last few minutes of this generation, Father. Father, I pray that we'll all be ready as these last days are going rapidly. Last week was your Sabbath and here we are in another one. And, Father, I pray that we will not be held up in the teachings of Babylon. Help us to stay strong and not to blind ourselves and to show everyone that being a Christian is not boring. Amen. And that there will be a light that will shine 